Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome dear friends, in this week we will discuss the work of N. Belsimo, a critic whose work introduces us to newer possibilities in the intersecting areas of gender and technology. Belsimo analyzes cyborg bodies, female bodybuilding, discourses on cosmetic surgery, challenges faced by female bodies in the virtual cyber space and feminist cultural studies of science and technology to develop alternate modes of narration and truth telling. N. Belsimo is the former dean of the School of Arts, Technology and Emerging Communication at the University of Texas at Dallas. Her work explores the cultural possibilities of emergent technologies in the context of gender dimensions of the body machine interface. Veronica Hollinger in her article, The Technobody and Its Discontents, comments that Belsemo is interested in exploring how gender remains a vigilantly guarded border concept within the context of burgeoning biotechnologies. She examines some of the features of technoculture which work to keep gender divisions in place to maintain the gendered status quo in spite of advances through which bodies are routinely retailored in almost every other respect. Her 1996 book titled Technologies of the Gendered Body is a highly significant study. It describes a contemporary cultural conjecture in which the body and technology are conjoined in a literal sense. Belsimo aims to examine the techno body and the cartography of female subjectivities embedded in the cyborgian narrative. In order to explain her idea in detail, she reads the female body through five discourses in her book. The five different discourses which she has taken up in her 1996 publication are reading the cyborg and feminism reading the female bodybuilding as a subculture, reading the discourses on cosmetic surgery including issues like the medical gaze, reading the virtual body in the cyber sphere and its connotations with the gender and reading the body in feminist cultural studies of science and technology. In the five modules of this week, we will look at these five perspectives in detail. Belsimo reads the body amid is technologically advanced, biotechnologically evolved and media mediated society, where culture and discourses on body are more gendered than ever. Belsimo suggests that body is a site of a struggle and not a blank canvas with agency. In a technologically driven society, machines may assume organic functions and the body may be materially redesigned, yet the society may still perpetuate the conventional gender binary. Belsimo examines ways in which the techno body is gendered, incorporating examples and processes from the everyday to acknowledge the evolved body. Before mapping the cyborg body, Belsimo establishes the literary lineage of the body as a discourse. She begins by quoting the cyborg figures already present in the popular domain, particularly referring to Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and Maria the Robot from Fritz Lang's film Metropolis. Cyborg is a coupling between the machine and the human within the body. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, which was published in 1818, is a frame story written in epistolary form documenting a fictional correspondence between Captain Robert Walton and his sister. 
the central character makes a deliberate decision and turns to modern experiments in the laboratory to create a life form. Another example quoted by Belsimo is that of Fritz Lang's expressionist silent film Metropolis which was released in 1927. Various prints of this movie with various lengths are available to us now. It has been an inspiration to several science fiction movies like Blade Runner, The Fifth Element etc. It presents the image of a futuristic city with the skyscrapers and expressways in the sky. Metropolis has also presented the figure of the evil genius Rotong who has created the visual look of a mad scientist for decades. It also presents to us Maria the robot look alike of a human form. It suggests how to penetrate the system that would control the population. 1980s are taken as the historical phase of the cyborg due to the presence of cyborgs in comics. Cyborg played by Victor Stone is a fictional superhero appearing in American comic books published by DC Comics. The character was created by writer Marv Wolfman and artist George Perez. Originally known as a member of the Team Titans, Cyborg was established as a founding member of the Justice League in DC's 2011 reboot of its comic book titles. It has resulted in several TV series, films, animations, toys, comics, etc. Different types of cultural products have been based on it. The presence of the cyborg figures in the popular culture denotes the presence of an other than the human entity while foregrounding the evolving nature of post-human subjectivities other than the male and the female. AI technologies are part of our cultural lived realities today. Sophia the Humanoid Robot by Hanson Robotics, the Iron Man series, daily life gadgets like smartwatches, smartphones, Alexa, links, etc. All these are part of our cultural discourse now. And Frankenstein happens to be the earliest example of it. Cyborg transcends human limitations and also our cultural imagination. Cyborg is a portmanteau word, a combination of cybernetic and organism. It suggests a being with both organic and biomechatronic body parts. The term was coined in 1960 by Manfred Kleines and Nathan Klein. There are certain alternate labels also with which we can identify a cyborg. For example, android, replicants, bionic humans, etc. The concept of the cyborg has been mediated through popular culture primarily through American technoscience. According to Gregory Bateson, the cyborg body is not bounded by the skin but includes all external pathways along which information can travel. The cyborg figures of Frankenstein and Maria represent a hybrid. Neither completely technical nor completely organic, they transgress the dominant cultural code. Figure of a cyborg is an alternative to the normative culture in the society. As core of this imagination also represents an act of subversion. It is a production of counter-narrative on the man as the supreme, beyond and above all. Cultural theorists like Michel Foucault, Mary Douglas and Donna Haraway interpret the body as a cultural text. Belsamo feels that the female body is related to the cyborg body and is a fundamental part of the contemporary cyborgian narrative as it was considered and categorized as a lack and lacking historically. Belsimo rereads Foucault through various feminist studies to acknowledge the historical construction of the gendered body and revisits Douglas's treatment of material body as a generative symbolic system to elaborate the foundational exims of what Elizabeth Gross has referred to as a new corporeal feminism. Belsimo supplements Foucauldian notion of body as a cultural text and suggests that the cyborg does not necessarily represent a development. The cyborg has a hybrid design. It has 
a part material body and also a cultural fiction and therefore suitable for studying gender identity. Drawing methods and interpretive practices broadly from feminist cultural studies, Belsimo suggests a critical framework. It postulates that the body is a central symbolic resource for cultural work, discursive symbolic body and material body are mutually determining. Gender is often a subsumed discourse within many studies of the body and the culture. This underlying structure both enables and constrains our engagement with new technologies. It can propagate binaries, limiting therefore the revisionary potential of new technology. Historically, body is inscribed, painted, written, mutated, etc., and it broadens the cultural discourse on the body. Therefore, it makes sense to write of the discourse of the body that is the pattern ways that the body is represented according to broader cultural determinations and also the way that the body becomes a bearer of science and cultural meanings. The explication of meaning can be found in the works of Michel Foucault, Brian Turner, Kathleen Gallagher, Laker, Emily Martin, Haraway, Rosie Bredotti, etc., who have studied the modes of representation of body. Belsemo addresses the relationship between the body, culture and technology to enumerate the ways in which the body is put into discourse. Modes of representing the body through discourse can be through iconography, aesthetics, symbolic functions and repression etc. We can refer to Emily Martin who focuses on the medical gaze on the ordinary American women as segregated due to their social and economic backgrounds. Martin has observed that women belonging to diverse socio-economic strata construct opposite and different views on women's reproductive cycles as opposed to the views of medical science. Belsimo establishes a relationship between the body, culture and ideas of otherness also found in the discourses on cyborgs. The female and the cyborg bodies are united through demarcations of otherness, not part of the dominant cultural hierarchies of control and surveillance rejected by male-centric pedagogies. The body is a site of a struggle and an apparatus producing scientific and cultural knowledge and genealogy. Theoretical understanding of body proves its textual nature. In his genealogical project, Foucault annotates the intelligibility of the body in terms of the discursive, social and political practices that construct it as an object or a subject with meaning. Body to him is a truth producing apparatus. In the history of sexuality, Foucault elaborates on four apparatuses of control that produce systems of power and control, also marking the transition between a traditional order and one constituted by scientific biopower. The first is the hystericization of female body. The second is construction of homosexuality. The third is infant, child or adolescent sexualities. And the fourth is discursive of perversion. Belsimo suggests that these apparatuses identify a conjunction that produce body knowledge. Belsimo also quotes, Althusser's concept of the ISA and RSA to explicate the discursive nature of the body and the politics associated with it. Althusser's concept of ISA that is ideological state apparatuses and RSA that is the repressive state apparatuses produce a specific knowledge through control. ISA functions through ideologies such as education, religion, family, whereas the RSA function through repression such as through the police force, army, etc. However, Foucault has used the term apparatus and then technology to denote specific knowledge meaning its production. For Belsimo, technology or apparatus also produce a system of communication. She thinks that technology names the process whereby discursive practices work interdependently with other cultural forces to produce effects 
at the level of the body. Foucault is not so much interested in the truth of the body as in elaborating the apparatus that produces truth effects at the level of the body. For Belsemo, Foucault's elaborations on the apparatus or technology are culturally rooted in practices and institutions and they can be categorized as differentiation and basis, power in beings, types of objectives and degrees of realizations. When we talk of differentiation and basis, we talk of beings who are differentiated on the basis of their categories like gender, age, race, etc. We talk of power in beings when beings are influenced under a condition either through ideology or through repression. In types of objectives, he discusses power which can be used to fulfill distinctive objectives in a state. Foucault's argument of technologies of the self is close to the one presented by Teresa de Lauretis in her Technologies of Gender or by Bill Semo in Technologies of the Gendered Body. Foucault delineates the means by which power is exercised and his central argument is that the means of production of discourse follow an ambiguous process of the construction of knowledge claims. For example, if we take the historization of women's bodies, it was accomplished through firstly the exercise of new discursive practices that is of science and of psychoanalysis. Secondly, through institutionalized social relations that of the family and thirdly the knowledge claims that is medicalization of the female body. In this manner the meaning of the female body as a hysterical entity, a corporal being which is susceptible to hysteria was a meaning which was constructed through discursive practices. Not only through the discourses of science and medicine but also through the establishment of social institutions. These institutions in turn reproduce specific knowledge claims through practices established by the profession and as part of the education and socialization of practitioners themselves. It is a way in which scientific biopower is organized and refined. Foucault suggests the term apparatus and later technology to name the process of connection between discursive practices, institutional relations and material effects that working together produce a meaning or a truth effect for the human body. For Bill Simo, the systems exerting control and surveillance through various apparatuses or technologies are labeled as conjecture because Foucault fails to recognize that gender itself is organized, institutionalized system of differences that constitute the individual body and renders it meaningful. It contradicts his claim that the gender is a given a uh, natural. These four central apparatuses of control mark the transition between a traditional order and one constituted by scientific biopower. All are rooted in social relations, language and fundamentally the human body. Thus in his genealogical project, Foucault annotates the intelligibility of the body in terms of the discursive social and political practices that construct it as an object or a subject of meaning. The notion of technology describes the working of a collection of practices that produce specific cultural effects. Belsimo points out that gender itself is an organized institutionalized system of differences that constitute the individual body and renders it meaningful. Feminists consider Foucault's notions on gender as simplistic. Gender is not a nature given. It would be pertinent here to refer to Bart Kowalski who says that and I quote, what Foucault has done is to reproduce and produce as history the patriarchal history of sexuality, unquote. Body becomes a dividing practice here, a male centric discourse. Belsimo notes that body has been a male centric discourse and the female body is historically marginalized. 
and she quotes Susan Suleiman to raise questions on how the body has become a male dominant symbolic construct. Susan Suleiman's collection of essays, The Female Body in Western Culture, which was published in 1985, forwards certain inquiries in her critique of Foucault. First, what is the place of the female body in the discourses on body? Second, what place has the female body occupied in the Western imagination and in the symbolic productions of Western culture over the past 2000 years? Thirdly, where is the she? However, reading the body as a symbolic discursive construction is present in both Foucault and Suleiman. Suleiman says that the cultural significance of the female body is not only that of a flesh and body entity, but that of a symbolic construct. Everything we know about the body, particularly the female body, exists for us in some form of discourse. Discourse cannot be segregated from material forms. Belsebu suggests that this approach inadvertently ends up invoking a dualistic logic that the female body is either a flesh and blood entity or a symbolic construct. Belsebu corrects the historical inaccuracy with respect to the female body and elaborates on the technologically constructed gendered body. By reworking Foucauldian standpoint of the historical construction of the gendered body and Mary Douglas analysis of the material body, Belsimo elaborates on the following. Firstly, body a symbolic resource for cultural work. Second, the idea of mutual interdependence of the discursive symbolic and material bodies. Thirdly, gender which is wrongfully submerged within literary discourses on body and culture. The aforementioned are the fundamentals of corporeal feminism suggested by Elizabeth Gross. Belsimo uses this emergent framework to move into the domain of the technologically gendered body. As a part of this argument, Belsimo elaborates on the material construction of the body as a symbolic cultural resource and she refers to Mary Douglas in this context. Mary Douglas formulates social relations and functions as a resource for human body. Notion of the physical body is at the center of her account of the cultural construction of the symbolic body. In her work Natural Symbols, Douglas explains that body is embedded in culture and never out of it. Human body is always defined by the set cultural beliefs of a particular social relation. The physical body is structured, but the social experiences of the body are not modified according to the physical. And Douglas argues that the meaning of the body and thus the meaning of different systems of body symbols constructed through a system of exchange of the physical body and of the social or symbolic body. So, there is nothing given or natural about the body. The meaning of the physical body is not naturally determined. It can be said that there are no natural symbols, although there are plentiful symbolic representations of nature and the natural body. This notion denaturalizes the body and the body discourse. Douglas suggests that gender identity can be redefined as a body attribute that is assigned, organized and acquired through the process of social perception. Belsimo also cites in this context Thomas Laker to establish a relation to Douglas' argument. The 18th century radicals reinterpreted patriarchal social order. They shifted away from the degree of metaphysical perfection of men and women towards a new model of biological divergence. And female body according to the 18th century radicals was no longer inferior or an infantile version of the male. They thought of complementary relationship between men and women based on discoverable biological distinctions. An anatomy and physiology of incommensurability replaced a metaphysics of hierarchy in the representation of women 
in relation to men. However, the hierarchy was not demolished as the female body was defined through reproductive terminologies only. This biological explanation establishes a relationship between body and social control and it made the issue of control even more volatile. For if female bodies are fundamentally different from male bodies and not just an inferior version, the issue of control becomes more critical. For example, how does one control a body that is not entirely knowable? Belsimo uses not only the arguments of Thomas Blaker but also of Mary Povey. For example, Povey's examination of the medical construction of the female body is built on further by Belsimo. Povey has explicated how medical discourse constructed the female body is excessive and threatening to the prevailing social order. The female body is silenced and Povey has cited the example of the use of chloroform for pregnant women in the 19th century as a way of administering control over the female body among medical practitioners, midwives and obstetricians, even though later on it proved to be highly risky and resulted in several untimely deaths. By citing this example, Povey implies that conventional definition of a female body being governed only by the reproductive capacity establishes the definition of the female body as always lacking and needing control. On the one hand, representing women as an inherently unstable female body authorizes ceaseless medical monitoring and control. On the other, this representation of women as always requiring control produces her as always already exceeding the control that medicine can exercise. The female body constructs identity, a site of potential transgression against the boundaries determined by science and technology but threatening to the male centric discourses. Belsebo establishes the marginalization of the female body in the field of medicine and sociocultural domains. A similar treatment of the female body can be witnessed in the field of media in the popular discourse. Belsimo describes the condition of being represented as a woman rather than being a woman which manufactures a gendered person. Marlene Barr comments in her article that Belsimo's elaboration of a map of contemporary cyber culture is a needed feminist signpost for the mostly uncharted technology highway upon which humans now drive towards even more cultural and biological interchanges with machines. Belsimo foregrounds Arthur Crocker's and McLuhan's understanding of technology in this context. We shall take it up in the next module along with the mechanical reconstruction of the gendered body through female bodybuilding as a subculture. Thank you.